This is Patagonian rosewood. Apparently there's over 150 different types of rosewood and quite a few woods that are called rosewood but are disputed. But this one was labeled Patagonian at the store where I bought it. And it's got a lot more orange going on than the previous rosewood that I worked with. And I wasn't sure if it would act differently, if it had different characteristics. It's really heavy. Maybe even the heaviest would have dealt with. So it was kind of intriguing getting this set up to turn. And here I'm just using the warm screw uh, to get the bowl blank mounted onto the chuck. And then my first task is to get it to round and, and balanced. And right away I noticed uh, it was like turning a bowling ball. This wood is so hard. Anyone that watches my videos knows that I always keep my chisels really sharp. I sharpen constantly, though I don't show it on video. I talk about it a lot. But even with a freshly sharpened gouge, uh, the wood was almost rejecting my efforts to, to shave into it. And maybe it was just me being used to turning softer woods like I have the past couple videos. Um, but it certainly didn't react the same way as the previous rosewood that I turned. This was clearly a different, uh, a different type of rosewood. Very evident from the feedback that it was giving me. As the video progresses, you're going to see the the gouge uh, approaching with different angles and that is so I can maximize the sharpness of the edge uh, before I have to take it back to the grinder. So I'll make a pass uh, with the flute at a different angle as you see there and it just presents a fresh edge. And it was right about here that I committed to the, the shape that I had in mind for the outside of the bowl, which is kind of opposite of what I normally do with bowl shapes, and you'll see how it develops. I have a shade over my window right by my lathe and a sliver of sunlight had uh, invaded and was going right across my tool rest there and I thought I'd have a little fun with that in the video. This almost looks like a welder or a, like a plasma cutter, something like that, kind of neat. I 
want to give a shout out to Sandy. Sandy is a subscriber of mine that uh, we've been communicating and just recently uh, found out that Sandy lives less than 10 miles from me, which is pretty amazing. We've never met, but uh, Sandy is having some trees removed and has offered me some wood from that process, and I really appreciate that. I appreciate the generosity. So let's take a look at some other things that subscribers have sent me. Some of their work. Simon made these beautiful bowls. Aren't they amazing? Dan Livingston. Beautiful bowl. Good work. Ray Evans made these lighthouses. And Matt, active duty Air Force. Beautiful. I appreciate you guys sending me pictures of your work. And though I've got a lot to go through, I'm, I'm happy to show them on my channel. So if you've sent me a, a, a picture or two and you haven't seen it on a video yet, I'll get to it. I just want you all to know, all my subscribers, everybody that views, and hey, if you're viewing and you haven't subscribed, why not do it? It's free and it helps me out. Regardless, I appreciate your views, and if I can give back, you know, that's what I'm trying to do by showing some people's work. I'm just very thankful, very grateful. These cracks are, I, I think they're just stress fractures in the wood. Uh, I thought they might go away, but they never did. But they're not gaping holes or anything, so I didn't have to worry about filling them. And they add character to the bowl, and I always appreciate that. I want to give another shout out uh, real quick to Odan. Odan, package received, opened, and I'm going to show that in my next video. Amazing. I really appreciate it. I know this looks like the bottom of the bowl, but it's actually the top. And what I'm doing here is just taking my uh, quarter inch scraper and defining the uh, bowl rim. I said quarter inch scraper, but I meant quarter inch parting tool, which I use as a scraper. Someday I'm going to buy myself a proper hollowing tool. For now though, this bull gouge, my go-to tool, is working pretty good. 
just have to be ever so gentle and deliberate when reaching inside like this at these odd angles. I sanded from 80 grit up to 220 and then hit it with denatured alcohol to raise the grain and then 220 again all the way up to 1000 grit and then finished it with walnut oil. This wood is so, uh, and I mentioned it before I know, but so hard and dense, uh, heavy. Uh, this thing shined after a thousand grit without any finish, so I didn't think it needed any uh, uh, shine juice or anything like that. And the walnut oil just looks beautiful on it. The chatoyance or color change in this wood is just fantastic. Look at that. I want to thank everybody for watching. Special thanks to my subscribers. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. I'd really appreciate it. Help me grow. More quality content coming soon. Semper Fi.